the fall of Afghanistan to Taliban on 15th August is a big tragedy. U.S. with a loyal suddenly from Afghanistan has caused this problem. People feel it is a betrayal. U.S. did not train the Afghan army well, though some weapons are given. All the weapons have fallen into the hands of Taliban without any bloodshed. They failed to defend their country. Someday, U.S. of course has to withdraw its army. But above, first of all, why did they come? What is the background? It is a tragedy today that people in thousands rushing to the airport and trying to capture any airport and trying to hang the flights which were running. There was firing. Some people were killed. Some people were killed in firing. And at a time when India presides over the Security Council, this happens. We also naturally has got a responsibility to find that all the people who want to get out of Afghanistan should get a proper exit. UN has to make arrangements. Neighboring countries have to help them. It is a Afghanistan story is a tragic story. For quite some time, Afghanistan, which is a country mixed with several tribes, including Faktuns, Pustyus, Uzbeks, and other tribes also. For a long time, there was backwardness and it was also controlled by Britishers for quite some time. In 1919, during the First World War, the Afghanistan was neutral. After the war, in 1919, the Afghan king, Jahir Shah, he tried to attack the British and there was a war. He entered on British India through Khyber Pass. Ultimately, British has to accept the full independence to Afghanistan. They couldn't defeat him. Afghanistan was declared as a sovereign country. And it was a good change for Afghanistan. King Jahir Shah was a progressive man. He banned burqas. He brought several reforms. He made elementary education compulsory to all the people. Mullahs and Maulis did not agree and they revolted against him. Afghanistan is having several tribes, several heads 
of the tribes used to have a lot of land in their hands. They used to marry 15, 20 women also and make them to work freely in their fields and all that. They did not want education for the people. When the armed resistance has become more king abdicated in favor of his son. His son was killed. Another king came, Nadir Shah, and Nadir Shah was also killed by Amanullah Khan's supporters. Nadir Shah's son became the king in the latter period. They have completely abandoned the reforms brought earlier. During this period, there were many conspiracies and all that. And ultimately, there was peace for some time. And during the Second World War, also, Afghanistan was neutral. Both Soviet Union, Germany, America and other countries tried to influence by establishing roads and other things. Some of the kings were afraid of their development and stopped Soviets from developing the railway trains, railway lines. Abruptly, this development was stopped. But later, the, in 1968-69, 60s period, there was another conspiracy when the king was Italy. And his brother-in-law, Cousin Daud captured the power. He abolished the kingdoms and became the president of Afghanistan. He also tried to bring some reforms, but he was very dictatorial. I do remember talking to one of the army officers in those days when <clears throat> Dawood was overthrown. I had some first-hand information in 1968-69, something like that. I was in Afghanistan for three days on the way to Tajkali for a youth festival as part of All India Students Federation, Youth Federation and Youth Congress delegation. Later, there was a revolt. There was an underground communist party in Afghanistan. And unfortunately, there were two factions of it fighting against each other. There was one senior mullah who was progressive, who was known as Ustad. He was very popular on the I mean large section of the people. He used to serve the poor people. The secret agents of Dawood killed him because he was a communist. Then there was a big demonstration against the killing of this senior leader. There was police firing. 
several dozens of people were killed. Then there was one lakh people demonstrated before the palace of Dawood. Then Dawood ordered the army to come and start firing on the people who were demonstrating before the palace. At that time, the army was reluctant. There was a some leftist officers in the army. They went and approached the Communist Party, which was working secretly. They asked the advice of them. When the army officers are ready to accept the proposals of the Communist Party, then they told them, don't fire on people. If the if Dawood insists, fire on the palace. So ultimately, they fired on the palace, killed the youth. They went to jail. Thousands of prisoners, Democrats, leftists, they were all released from the jails. Then came People's Democratic Party's government. Mama Tariqi has become the President of Prime Minister of Afghanistan. He was a very progressive communist leader and he brought a number of reforms. Unfortunately, after some time, there was a conspiracy inside the Communist Party, the other faction, Mr. Amin killed Taraki. Um, Taraki fearing the invasion of other countries invited Soviet army. Soviet armies came inside and after the Soviet armies entered Afghanistan, Amin was thrown over. Later he was killed. Then again, <coughs> People's Democratic Government has formed another government, Taraki and other communist leaders, the latter who became the prime ministers. They tried to bring reform. Actually, <coughs> in 1920s, King Amanullah first brought some reforms. These reforms were overthrown. So the communists not only brought back the compulsory primary education to all the people, distributed the Lord sense of the land from the hands of the mullahs and tribal leaders. And women were made to go to school. Burkas were again banned. This was supported by large sections of women. The marriages of 15, 20 people to one mullah, these type of things were bad. But this was naturally opposed by 
rivals. Besides this, there was international controversy. Pakistan was afraid of a Muslim communist country as a neighbor. Pakistan trained in their madrasas many Afghan children as fundamentalists. That is how Taliban, the student army, has come up. They have supplied them weapons. Saudi Arabia also supplied them the weapons. On the other hand, the Russian influence was not accepted by some other countries. They also supported Taliban's. Americans, Germans, Saudi Arabia poured billions of dollars into Afghanistan to overthrow a communist government and overthrow, send out the Russians. Ultimately, Russians has to withdraw its army. Naturally, there was a feeling of nationalist movement that some foreign army is in Afghanistan. After the Russians left, by that time, Americans sent Osama bin Laden to lead these Taliban groups. But later, Osama bin Laden and Taliban created a problem for Pakistan and became anti-American. In 2001, he is supposed to be the brain behind 9-11 attack on the United States of America. So the Americans wanted Osama bin Laden to be captured. Taliban by that time captured the entire country. They refused to hand over Osama bin Laden. They said he is their guest. This guest business costed them a lot. American army and NATO armies invaded Afghanistan in 2001. For the last 20 years, American army was controlling Afghanistan. Many Taliban were killed. Many civilians were killed. It was a very big tragic story. Ultimately, in 2001, a Afghan government was formed, supported by USA. Up to 2014, the American supported president was ruling. In 2014, again the elections has taken place. A new president has been elected. After that, Taliban again started attacking from different parts. Taliban are one of the most cruel religious fundamentalists. They are anti-democratic, they are anti-education, they are anti-women. They killed many children who are going to schools, particularly girls' children who are going to schools. They killed indiscriminately thousands of civilians in 2001. Americans said 
the war against terrorism. The whole world should join with them. Either the countries or people are with them as anti-terrorism or with the enemy. As if anybody who wants to be neutral, they are all pro terrorists But what happened in 2021? They started negotiating with Taliban, saying that there are good Taliban and bad Taliban. There cannot be good terrorists and bad terrorists. Terrorism is cruel. Terrorism is terrorism. They only wait for an opportunity. They had a secret understanding. That is why no American soldier was killed. No Americans fought against Stalin bombs for the last 20 years. American embassy was not touched. American soldiers and their diplomatic people were allowed from Kabul airport to fly. Kabul airport was controlled by the Americans, but it was not invited by Taliban even after they captured Kabul. So this is a real betrayal of the Americans, of Afghans. Now, what will happen with Taliban capturing the power in Afghanistan? As they are religious fundamentalists and supported by Pakistan, They will try to attack India, create problems. Imran Khan says this is a liberation of Afghanistan. This is a victory from slavery. This is a utter nonsense. This is capture of power from U.S. imperialism to another cruel religious fundamentalist group. Pakistan is, is like a wounded animal. They would like to take revenge on India. They would like to utilize naturally Afghans. Taliban, not normal citizens of Afghanistan. Generally, Afghan people by nature are not happy with Pakistan at any time. They, they wanted to be free from Pakistan. There is a border dispute between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Border dispute between Afghanistan and China also. This is not going to be a problem only to India. The Afghan Taliban are Sunnis. They are anti-Shia. So Iran is a country with Shia majority and Shia ruled country. Iran will be also a target by Taliban. Later, certainly they will create problem for Pakistan, for Chinese borders and even old Soviet Union republics like 
Uzbekistan, which have got borders with Afghanistan. They are like ISIS, would like to invade as many countries as possible. It is a very big tragedy. Now, for the time being, they have said that no attack on the civilians in Kabul city. How many days this will continue, nobody knows. For the first time, after the capture of Taliban, slowly Afghanistan is limping back to normal life, but it may take months. Many people are still afraid, particularly the women, they are afraid. The democratic people, they are afraid. Definitely, there will be no democratic government, only a dictatorial type of fundamentalist, cruel government will be there. If it is limited to only Afghanistan, possibly the other countries would not have bothered. But the human tragedy in Afghanistan is a tragedy for the entire humanity. People, governments, they should all think of what is going to happen and try to control Taliban as much as possible. Afghan people who want to come out of Afghanistan should be helped. Naturally, neighboring countries should help. Canada agreed to take <coughs> 20,000 refugees from Afghanistan. But government of India said they will positively agree Hindus and Sikhs first. Majority of the Afghan people, why majority? All the Afghan people are Muslims. They are, are democratic type of people. They should be allowed. Pakistan may not allow. India has got another peculiar problem. Now, we have countries, neighboring countries with strained relations. Pakistan, China, of course. We have got long-term problem, border disputes, Kashmir issue. But the relations are strained with Nepal. Relations are strained with Bangladesh, with Sri Lanka, and no good relations with Myanmar. Why these things are happening? There is a saying that everybody, if everybody is against you, then something might be wrong with you. Fundamentalist type of thinking, big brother attitude towards small library countries is not going to help India. With Nepal, with Bangladesh, with Sri Lanka, we should try to mend our relations. We should respect them. Otherwise, all these countries will become more and more hostile to us. A good neighborly relations are always safe for us. Now, with the emergence of a Taliban Afghanistan, 
we have to be much more vigilant. But unfortunately, even the BJP government is also carrying fundamentalist type of activities. There is terrific dissatisfaction in large sections of the paper. Privatization of profit-making public sectors, increasing taxes, increasing poverty, unemployment, hunger, COVID-19, all these are problems. Poverty has increased many times. At the same time, the rich have become much richer. Country, inside the country, there should be more free democratic understanding. People should be allowed free thinking. A democratic atmosphere should prevail in the country. Then only it is possible to defend the country from all sorts of outside attacks. Inside and outside, this type of enmity is not good. Unfortunately, our Prime Minister and central cabinet ministers, including Hamid Shah, who is said to be number two. They always think of party voting and elections. They don't talk as ministers, as government representatives. Once a government is elected, it is a government responsible for the entire people. But every day, talking of fighting against the opposition parties and trying to overthrow the governments by hook or crook, not allowing the democratically elected parties to form state governments like in Goa, Manipur, Meghalaya, Uttarakhand, many other places. And in spite of all these things, large number of states are outside the influence of the BG. The central government is more fighting against the opposition parties than against the poverty, unemployment and other issues. These things should be changed. A safe, democratic, free India will be more secure to fight any type of enemies from anywhere. People should feel secure. This rethinking should come in the country, particularly among the government leaders and the ruling party, BJP, and the remote controlled RSS. Let us hope we will be in a position to fight back the Taliban's in if they try to interfere inside the borders of India. Thank you.